guys, this is Diana Scott. I'm here for your March 27th, 2020 HCC health update. I'm recording from my office. I kind of jerry-rigged the camera here, so hopefully this will work well. Basically, I want to give you a very brief update on the numbers currently, and then we'll talk a little bit about what COVID looks like as far as how different it is from the flu or from a cold, and then what you should do if you have symptoms. So very briefly, the numbers currently in the state of Oregon for COVID-19, there are 414 COVID cases as of the data at the time of this update, um, with 12 deaths across the state. 26 of those total cases are in Lane County, where we've not had any additional deaths since that original death a, a couple weeks ago. Those numbers represent an increase of 98 cases in Oregon since the day before yesterday, doubling what we experienced the day before that with two additional cases in Lynn County since the previous numbers. So that's why we're concerned. We're seeing some doubling of those numbers right now, and still it's our most fragile and elderly population that is highest at risk. So how does COVID look different from a cold or from the flu? A cold is an upper respiratory infection, generally with a, a runny nose, a stuffy nose, with or without a mild fever, maybe a, a mild cough. Colds generally last from seven to 10 days, although sometimes a cold can last two weeks. You treat a cold with rest, fluids, and over-the-counter medications such as decongestants, maybe a cough medicine if you have a mild cough. Basically, that cold's gonna run its course. Influenza or the flu is more severe than a cold. It generally has a mild to a high fever, moderate to severe headache, a cough, fatigue, body aches, you feel like you've been hit by a truck. The flu generally lasts between five days and two weeks. And what concerns us about the flu is the possibility of developing pneumonia. Treatment is similar to a cold in those early mild stages, cold or flu medication over the counter, Tylenol or ibuprofen if needed, as long as you've not <clears throat> already taken a cold medication that has Tylenol or ibuprofen in it. Early treatment with antiviral medications such as Tamiflu can reduce your symptoms and reduce the length of time that you're ill with the flu, but you have to get that medication on board within the first 24 to 48 hours. If you develop difficulty breathing or worsening after you were improving, that's the time to call your medical provider to decide how to proceed if you have influenza. COVID-19, different than a cold or the flu, is a lower respiratory illness. Some people may have mild symptoms or may not know that they have the illness, their symptoms being so mild. The main symptoms of COVID-19 that do present are fever, usually high, moderate to severe coughing with shortness of breath. There's no specific treatment for COVID-19 at this time, although research is being conducted into antivirals and vaccines uh, right now. Symptomatic treatment includes rest, fluids, Tylenol if needed. If you develop difficulty breathing, that's the time to call your medical provider or the emergency room to decide how you need to proceed. And if you have severe difficulty breathing, of course, call 911. Antibiotics are not indicated for any of these illnesses unless a secondary bacterial infection develops. And to that point, let's talk very briefly about where to get information about COVID and what's going on. There are a great deal of misinformation um, posts going on right now. I want to advise you to avoid chat groups and blogs as there is so much misleading and blatantly misinformation circulating. For instance, in many different forms, the notion that drinking hot water will cure this virus is a common thread, sometimes uh, going so far as to add lemon to that hot water that that'll even do better. There's no evidence whatsoever for that, and if you understand how viruses work, and particularly that this virus is breathed into your lungs and is a lower respiratory tract infection, then you'll understand that this is not a reasonable discussion. Consuming boiled ginger on an empty stomach, holding your breath for 10 seconds, hot saunas and hair dryers, and an ancient Sri Lankan drink do not kill the virus. Neither does turmeric or Life Boy soap. Neither does colloidal silver products, and drinking Corona beer does not cause the virus. You've seen all of this stuff. To my point, if you're gonna pursue looking for information about the coronavirus or COVID-19, you need to do so on sites that are appropriate um, 
evidence-based medical background types of sites and avoid those just general conversations. I think today a uh, discussion went around about ibuprofen contributing to deaths and had severe outcomes with COVID-19. And that is also misinformation that was built on a very early, very preliminary study. What you need to understand is that when we have a situation like this, medical professionals scramble to start researching and studying and looking for trends and looking for ideas. And so early on, somebody will see something that could represent a trend or could represent a causality. And so it'll raise the question, is this connected? And that's what happened with the ibuprofen question. There was a, there was a very early on, very interesting question about that. And then somebody grabbed that and turned that question into evidence that, oh, this is what happens. And it's not at all true. Since then, there's been further research and there's no connection whatsoever at this point in time between the use of ibuprofen and, and bad outcomes with COVID-19. So avoid, I mean, really avoid chat groups and sites and even medical people going on posting stuff. Oh, I worked here. So this is going on. It really needs to be backed up with evidence-based medicine and research. And the way that you're going to do that is you're going to look for your information on, on um, sites that are appropriate. So I suggest that you go where I go for information and where, where Samaritan Health Services and where the Corvallis Clinic is going for their information because it's evidence-based. It's got um, a great deal of validity and li reliability with regards to the information that comes out of it. And that is the CDC or locally the Oregon Health Authority. Those sites have videos and great information if you're looking for some more understanding about COVID-19. If you're a person who doesn't like governmental sites, then I would suggest a great place for information is the Mayo Clinic's website. They have right on their front page a link that'll take you into some COVID information. Um, uh, WebMD also, when I opened it yesterday, had a great uh, link to COVID-19 information. And then I use a, a medical site called Medscape. Yeah, I think you can access that as a non-medical professional for some of their information as well. So I just strongly recommend that if somebody's posting a video of somebody chit-chatting about COVID-19, there's a really good possibility that that is not going to give you evidence-based information. And all it's doing is producing fear and misinformation across the country. Get your information from a reliable source. And if you're curious about something, I mean, shoot me an email. I'm happy for you to do that or a text, and I'll see if I can field that information for you. I also wanted to mention that if you have regular health stuff that needs to be attended to, that you need to see somebody, the local clinics, both Samaritan and Corvallis Clinic, are doing everything we can to make sure that your medical provider offices are open. The urgent cares are open. Corvallis Clinic's quick cares are open. And if you don't know whether or not you need to be seen for something, I mean, I can just, I can tell you about my site. You can call quick care in Lebanon and we'll field your question and direct you to the right place. That's it for today. Have a good day.